Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new league racing video and it's the title decider of PSGL. This is round number 14 of the PSGL season and it's gonna be the last league race of this season. Now you can see we're driving Abu Dhabi and round 14 was cancelled so uh, this will be the last race and we are 11 points ahead. Uh, with 16 points up for grabs for the win and 12 points for P2. Um, you can see in the top right how the point system works in PSGL. But that basically means that Bari, who is in P2, needs to finish at least P2 when we get 0 points. Um, and of course we are trying to, uh, to win this race, nonetheless. Uh, because, yeah, that, uh, that will be a beautiful way to finish off the championship, of course, winning. Uh, the race and the championship. Now, if Barry does win, we need a minimum of P5. So, um, if Barry finishes second, then we need a minimum of P9. And yeah, that should be very much achievable, of course. Uh, however, Abu Dhabi, not one of my strongest tracks. I was bad in qualifying here in WR as well. Uh, even though I did not really practice for the WR, is usually. Even if I don't practice, I tend to, on some tracks, do really well, and some tracks. Uh, I tend to be just bad, um, so uh, if F1 Esports comes and this track is on the calendar, I'm going to need to do some proper practice on it, uh, and it's a great measurement to see how good I'm at this track, and you can see there, after our first run, we are down in P13, and that means uh, the pressure is on for this lap, because we have to improve, simple as that, um, this lap will not be enough to get into Q2, and the pressure is on. If we do not get into Q2, then the pressure is going to be on for the race because um, we're going to have to be starting in the bottom five then. Simple as that. And if Barry then wins, we need to climb up to P5. Uh, and that's not easy because this is just F1, F1 Esports 2.0. So we have to do well. We simply have to do well and improve on this lap but as you can see there first few corners and we are 800 down into the chicane and this is such a tricky braking zone because of the potholes that are on this track um, later on in this video i will explain a little bit more about the potholes on this track nice but uh, as you can hear me already complain about it there uh, on some parts of the track you tend to fall through the track with your tires um, but yeah as i said later on this video i'm gonna be explaining more about it we are eight 100s down though as we go into the final sector and we have to improve i reckon at least half of them to get into q2 so pressure is on for these final few corners and we have to be on the limit and the pressure is fully on we're down in p16 so we're gonna have to definitely improve here and we are improving you can see we're one ten up into the final corner and i actually took that quite cautiously only improved half a ten, but that is enough to get into Q2 and that was a little bit close for comfort P14 and it shows that we still do not have a great qualifying pace around Abu Dhabi unfortunately and that Q2 once again the pressure is going to be fully on as well Dylan Warren, Frederick Rasmussen, Will Lewis, Johnny Tomala and Jet Norgroff all out in uh, Q1 so on to Q2 we're going to go then um, this is our first new tire run of the session. Uh, some people went out for a used tire run, but I felt like that was a little bit useless around here. So I decided not to do that as the first purple lap times are setting in. Jake is back to his lap. Barry goes to provisional P1. Yeah, nice pothole. And nice yeah, as you can see there, uh, my tire fell through the ground. Uh, you can see the left front dip through the asphalt. Um, and it's been a known bug on Abu Dhabi, on F122, it was it was an issue as well. It was fixed though, but for some reason it's back in F123. And yeah, you can just see uh, the tire um, dropping through the asphalt now. Before you go, oh, you're bottoming out, you shouldn't take that curb. Uh, please shut up, don't be an NPC. Because if you have ever done Abu Dhabi on F123, on any decent level, you would know that... Uh, it's such a big issue. Uh, so don't be like these people that think, oh, it's a right eye issue. You can literally see the front left tire drop through the asphalt. It will be fixed 
uh, for sure soon, but um, just keep the comments to yourself like these because you look like a complete NPC to anyone who has any knowledge of racing or physics in general. Um, objects tend to not just fall through each other. Uh, I think there's a one in an endless chance of that happening. Uh, but anyway, our physics uh, lesson ends here. On to our one and only lap of Q2. This is our one and only chance to get into Q3. So once again, the pressure is fully on for this lap. And we have to get it together. No mistakes allowed. And this is so scary because the chances of just dropping through the asphalt again going into the chicane are quite high but we have to we cannot afford to drop any lap time and drive off the pace we cannot be afraid to of these kind of things because the grid is too close for this and I have to be on it every single corner especially considering we are a little bit of the pace we have to be fully on it every single corner into the final sector we go you can see we are only 200s up on Philip Preitschneider in P11 so we are gonna have to do a magical last sector to get into Q3 down to third gear for this tight hotel section a short shifting to fourth and you can see the front tires struggling to grip up early on the power as we head into the final two corners easy flat out through here and this final corner is gonna have to be super on the limit down to third gear early on the power up to the line we go and it is P8 P8 for now it's still two people to cross the line but that means we have made it into Q3 and that last sector was purple because otherwise there was no way of us making it through into the top 10 um, because we were not on a good first two sectors so um, yeah that that last sector had to be spot on and it was uh, I'm glad it was because otherwise we would have been out this is our first lap of Q3 now this is the set of tires where we had the lockup on into the chicane but those were the freshest tires we have the, all the other ones we had done a full push lap on so um, P8 it is on a same use set of tires and once again pressure is on for this final lap uh, even though we are lacking pace on this track I feel like uh, we have been performing well under pressure so far in these final laps and once again it's time to pull out um, a near perfect lap for what I feel like um, even though we are lacking pace into the second sector we're gonna go equal first sector and that tends to be the case uh, always on a new set of tires versus used it's usually always the last two sectors where new tires come alive versus used tires so for 100s gain uh, after the first corner of sector 2 let's see if it can gain a little bit more and again unfortunately I dropped through the asphalt another pothole um, and that cost us it definitely around joke. one to one and a half ten so once again it's all gonna come down to the final sector can we make up enough time in this final sector to still fight for pole position perhaps you can see a 52.135 and that means we're gonna have to do an even better last sector than we did at the end of Q2 we're only P10 at the moment so we can go a full push there's nothing to lose here for us anymore and all we can do is gain positions two and a half tens up through the hotel section into the final corner we're gonna go gonna go early on the power to gain as much time as possible a little bit of wheel spin and up to the line it is p7 and um p8 actually after that final car crossed the line and yeah that is so frustrating that one and a half ten loss um arguably lost us at top four uh if we are being generous um and yeah it's so frustrating because sometimes you've got 10 qualifying laps in a row where you're not hitting puddles and we just were on the receiving end of them in this qualifying session uh, it's just so annoying and rng that uh we are racing a championship final on the most rng track of the game but we're just gonna have to deal with it we're gonna be starting in p8 in this race it's gonna be lights out and away we go starting in p8 we've got ulas Ozildrim on softs behind us into turn one we're gonna try and look for some free space around the outside of our teammate jake benham as we get a little bit squeezed wide so we're gonna have ulas on the softs 
on our inside. Gonna leave him space, of course, as he's gonna be much, much faster on that set of softs. However, we're gonna go around the outside because we want to defend from the cars behind, of course. As a lot of cars run wide, we go wide as well to carry more momentum onto this next straight. Into the slipstream of our teammate Jake Benham ahead of us. And we're gonna try and have a little look down the inside or the outside, whatever uh, way Jake goes. We go the other way down the inside of Alfie Butcher as it backs up a little bit there. Ethamel hits the car ahead of him and almost spins around. Alfie. Actually, Alfie spins around behind us. And that was a quite chaotic few corners right there. Uh, somehow we've managed to get through and skate it. I think Ulas, uh, who started on soft, actually uh, collided in that incident. Alfie did manage to go on and Barrios? I think only lost around three positions. So um, he did not lose too much compared to what he was in, in what position he was in. And yeah, now we have to focus Copy. on the what cars on? ahead of us. We've only uh, gained one position, of course, but we should have lost one actually uh, in total because of Ula starting on the softs, of course. So it's been a quite good opening lap, actually. Um, but now you can see Nicolas behind us on the mediums and he is the teammate of Barry Bormant, of course. So we uh, should not forget that he is probably going to try and help his teammates to uh, keep us away from scoring good points. Um, because, yeah, that's, that's what teammates do, of course. Now, Barry on the mediums, just like Nicolas behind us. Then it's the Aston and the Alfa Romeo of Brandon on the softs. And Ismail Fassi in the Williams on the mediums. Then it's Thomas, Jake and me on the hard. So, lots of different strategies going on uh, at the start of this race. Or at least in this opening stint. Um, now, soft medium is possible around here. But the tire wear is quite high. Especially on those rear tires in those traction zones. So... Um, you have to be very careful on the tires if you do soft medium like maybe Brendan or the Aston as Nicolas goes down or inside on the mediums of course now as you can see there I'm playing it quite safe as there is still 24 and a half laps to go and we have to keep our nose clean if we want to win this championship um, as Barry is still leading of course so he is gonna get 16 points as it is if he does finish P1 and we need to then actually gain three positions from here on so um, the pressure is on we can't make any mistakes as Nicolas now goes for the move on our teammate Jake Benham and sends it down the inside actually a little bit of a moment there I think Jake might have slightly tapped Thomas maybe it was Nicolas actually so we're gonna go in the attack here and try to pass our teammate Jake Benham into the next left hand there we're gonna Turn on the overtake button and try to go for a move around the outside. Nicolas does the same, but we don't quite have the grip to pull it off. And I had to back out there. As in WR, I got front wing damage by pulling off the same move. So having to be a little bit careful here to, uh, to keep our nose clean once again. But we do have to make some moves eventually as we do not have enough points if we uh, finish in P8 and Barry wins the race. Now... First soft runners boxing there, as you can see. The Aston Martin of Iker Bena and the Alfa Romeo of Brendan Lee. So um, they are going on to the mediums most likely. It is a long stint on the mediums, but um, yeah, that's what they're opting for. So they could go on to the hearts as well. Um, but again, uh, it all, uh, all depends how their tire is and how their pace is going to be. Now, end of lap 14, Nicolas and another car boxing. I couldn't see who that was, but I think it's Ismail Fassi actually coming into the box for a new set of hearts, as that is their only option, unless they go for a two-stop, of course. So um, now it's a Bari actually, the only one on a different compound than the hearts in this train. Bari on the mediums and the rest of the grid at this point on the hearts. And there's a huge train. Uh, so end of lap, fif lip lap 15 now, sorry. Uh, Barry coming into the box after being passed by Thomas on the previous lap. And now we're going to try and extend this lap. A Jake thinking? At least one more lap. Now you can hear me say what lap is Jake boxing. Um, you cannot hear my engine at all because we do not want to give certain things away on the live stream. Um, certain live information like what lap. Is Jake thinking of boxing? 
and um, yeah, Jake uh, planning on boxing at the end of this lap, so uh, we can work together towards the front. We got our other teammate, oh, yeah, Danny Bresne. We'll do a second strike. We've got our other teammate, Danny Bresne, right behind us um, as well, so we can work together well if we both box at the end of this lap and fight our way to the front and get those crucial points for a P5 finish. Now, my engineer told me to swap positions um, halfway down that first straight, but by then it was too late to go for a move. So, um, ideally I was planning to stay out another lap, but as our teammates are planning to box as well, okay, we can take you this lap. I decided to box here on lap 16. Um, if I stay out another lap, I can probably pass Thomas, of course, with the help of DRS. Um, and then we can work together towards the front as we, at that point, have the same strategy. So, we're going to be boxing um, in the same lap as our teammates, I thought. But, uh, change of plan for them. And this is not ideal. Um, but he's now boxing same lap as us and then he doesn't. It would have been nice if I would have been told, but okay. So, uh, now we're on our own. Uh, we've got no DRS, which is just a disadvantage. Uh, two cars that have DRS from each other are going to be going faster than a car on its own, of course. And now we've been put on our own here uh, with 13 laps to go on this set of mediums. So, I was not very happy about this at all, uh, because it was simply a mistake. Uh, I would have loved to stay out another lap. And... Yeah, maybe we would have lost one position to Alfie, of course, that you can see there behind us. But that that is not the end of the world, of course. Um, anyway, we're going to have to go on with it. Uh, halfway into lap 18, you can see Thomas boxed at the end of lap 17. And you might be thinking one lap is not that much, but the tire wear on this track is so high. And it's not even tire, actually. It's just the effect of the tire wear. The lap time loss from tire wear is so much bigger than on most tracks and that's because it's the softest compounds available it's the c5 compound as we said the fastest lap of the race as we're trying to hunt down our championship rival barry Bormand on those hearts and uh 11 laps to go so it's still quite a way to go on these mediums and by the end of the race he's definitely gonna have quicker tires than us but we have to get past him as fast as possible not a purple sector as i push quite hard to get into this drs and now we're gonna Played a little bit more safe in the next lap. We have to recharge our battery a little bit. Um, maybe we can just get past purely on the tire advantage, of course. I said a purple first, a green second, but then dirtier in the last sector, of course, as Thomas actually sets the fast lap of the race now. 1.9 seconds behind us. And we are going to get DRS now from Nicolas Longe. We let his teammate uh, Barry Wormand pass, of course, um, in order to try and fend us off. And I saw that group of cars ahead of Barry, so I decided, you know what, we have to go for it now. Because next lap, he is going to get DRS from those Williams cars ahead. So down the inside of Nicolas we go. Down the inside of Barry we go. We get squeezed into the wall. And there's a Fuck little bit off. of wheel banging going on there. Down the inside we go. Ahead of both cars we are. We get squeezed off the track as we got hit on corner entry and now we don't have DRS unfortunately which is a big disadvantage and into I mean, the final sector we're gonna go there's nothing we can do at this point apart from keeping the fight going on because Barry has to finish in the top two of course so we have to go was completely shit the last time I listened to you guys when it comes on strategy we have to go on the attack and down the inside we go and Nicholas moves on the braking to try and keeps us behind we get squeezed Man, off into the left to hander as well and as you can see, I was not very happy about it. But obviously, this is what Nicolas' aim was. And it makes perfect There's sense, no of course. teamwork in that first in, by the way. It's completely horseshit. <laughs> as you can see, I was not happy with how our strategy went um, in both the first and the second stint. But now we're going to get swallowed up by Thomas, of course. Luckily for us, Nicolas is gone now. And we can actually start focusing on it's so gaining. easy to see coming, honestly back time towards Barry um, and luckily for us Thomas of course on a new set of mediums can help us move forward in this race and uh, Barry of course on those older hearts is going to be dropping more and more pace so uh, we're trying to just simply uh, get close to Barry that's all we can do as I'm just lifting there I don't want to go for a move on Thomas at this point he is not 
uh, the one we're trying to finish ahead of. Um, we are just trying to uh, to get into the top five. So into the next right hand we go. We get but tapped these around. These guys are unbelievable, man. It's so obvious they're just trying to take me out. So unfair. Get these guys banned from the league, man. It's crazy. As we got tapped around by Alfie into that right hander, and yeah, now always the same guy as well. We are unfortunately out of the points with all the tires and everyone ahead of us, at least the next six, seven cars ahead of us. And at this point, it is looking very, very unlikely that we are going to win the championship because we are not going to be scoring any points. We've got Yoni Tormala right behind us. And we're just gonna no let him go. No tires. Everyone ahead of me. New tires because they shit pit lap. Uh, yeah, as you can hear me say again. The strategy just was not good. It was just poor from the team. As uh, simple as that. It, we sh I should have stayed out one lap longer. Like I wanted to, but... Uh, yeah, if the team wants me to really box on the lap, then I trust them, of course. And it was simply the wrong decision, so... Uh, now we've got no pace to get back into that. My red tires are complete. Well, we got to spin. Top 17. We're just gonna once again do the same thing again. Try and stay in the DRS of Yoni. Um, but Yoni boxed quite late, so he has really new tires compared to us. And yeah, that is making life quite tough at this point. So uh, seven laps to go at the end of this one. It is pretty much out of our hands now. Now I'm just gonna keep driving because you never know. What can happen, of course. Um, there might be a safety car. You can see, actually, Barry is not in a great position as well. He's currently in uh, P6. And, as I said before, he needs P2, at least. If he finishes P3, he will not get enough points. So, um, yeah, there's nothing we can do at this point, apart from just uh, keeping driving. That's all I'm doing. Um, there might be a late safety car that helps us in our advantage as Nicolas Longa is now retired from the race and um, Barry actually struggling to get into the top three and you can see there's yellow flags up ahead as there's been an incident with our championship rival Barry Bormand and let's just go what happened here? to the broadcast to see exactly what happened uh, in someone? this last two laps. Right towards turn one of course we won't see a safety car at this point Bader though leading the through and Barry going for fifth Barry now moves up into fifth place. He jumps off Aro Caraton. And now, with the DRS opens up, as lo along with that, and Thomas Ronhar as well. Look at Fassi now being dragged over to the inside. Back comes Caraton as they make their way down the inside again. Oh, oh. Good, massive contact. Massive contact. Barry makes a huge error and takes out Ishmael Fassi as well as Thomas Ronhar. He is now in third place, but surely the stewards will take a look at that. Oh, Barry, come on, man. I was just thinking, you know, he, he's got to make these moves, but he's got to be smart about it. He's just completely run square into the back of Thomas Ronhar, I believe that was. Ronhar now down into ninth, and in all of that, he still wasn't able to make any overtakes. He's around the outside of Ishmael Fassi at this point into what? Oh, my gosh. And now Ishmael Fassi off the circuit. Barry Burman muscling his way through. He's desperate to take the championship here, but Ishmael still holding him on the inside defending like a lion the young heart of Ishmael Fassi I mean he's doing a stellar job of holding off the uh, championship contender now one more lap to go here Brendan Lee leading Barry Borman all the way down in fifth I think you gotta bring out the champagne if you're an Otme fan George yeah I think you do final lap of the race folks and surely it seems academic right now of course Barry Borman will surely suffer at the helm of the stewards after making a really reckless break heading down in towards the chicane section and now is at the mercy of Alfie Butcher who looks to make the overtake into fifth he does so and certainly does once again place a barrier in between him and of course Barry Burman at this point Burman will not be champion he needs P2 at the very least and at this point being hoovered up by the Haas as they make their way through the final sector for this final time here on lap 29 of 29 Boat Burman again being swarmed upon Jake Benner moves up into fifth now Barry now losing place after place but here at this point it's the final sector Brendan Lee of course a place where he was crowned before 
before as a champion back in season, well, the 2017 F1 Esports season, the very first time he was here in Yas Marina, where he came across the line to crown himself F1 Esports champion. He'll make his way through the final two corners here this time in Abu Dhabi, season 34 this time. He'll take a race win here in PSGL, but that's not the story. It's Yana Watmir, everyone, the GOAT. Speaking of the words from Jack Kinnan, the GOAT is indeed back. Yana Watmir, he is your champion here in season 34 of PSGL. <laughs> and he pulls out the burnout coming across the line, Yana Watmir. And as you can see there, after such a long season of carnage and chaos and stress, we have managed to get our fifth PSGL title, our fourth one on PC. <laughs> and what a last race of the season it was. Absolutely chaos. Um, and this was our only race of the season we didn't finish in the points, actually. Not much I could do about it, of course, because I simply just got tapped around uh, by Alfie, who broke too late, misjudged his breaking point. Um, and yeah, <laughs> unfortunate, a typical championship race. Ferrari, of course, with Nicolas and Barry tried everything, uh, especially in those last laps. I know a lot of people said uh, Barry was dirty, but you have to see his perspective as well. That uh, He had to try, he had to finish in the top two. Um, and the same for Nicolas, you know, they tried uh, keeping me behind. They did everything possible. Uh, but yeah, they were 11 points behind and getting a top two finish when you have to in such a competitive field is so hard to do. So uh, GG's for them to trying, of course, um, they threw everything at me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this long PSGL season. I definitely did. I hope uh, uh, there's going to be uh, another PSGL season, uh, season after F1 Esports. Uh, I know WR does... Uh, a season mid-season of Elmen Esports but the attendance of course is quite inconsistent uh, because everyone is focusing on Elmen Esports so I might be doing some ra races of that but for now the league races have ended um, and I'm gonna continue with the My Team series uploads um, and other kind of videos uh, I've got loads of ideas still for F123 make sure to check out my Yarno Up More channel as well for uh, F1 manager videos I might be uploading some FIFA videos as well soon there so Make sure to check that out. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, league racing season. Next competitive race we're going to be doing is F1 Esports. Hope you guys will enjoy that as well. And see you guys next time. Ciao. Yeah, yeah, yeah.